This podcast contains adult language, descriptions of violence, sexual references, and other possibly offensive themes. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to this episode of Back to the Story, where friends come together to play Dungeons and Dragons. I'll be your DM, Klaus. Let's get started. Okay. If anyone can talk of Balgarth out of a fight, it's you. <laughs> if anyone can keep us alive, it's you. But if you ask me what my calling would be, I'd say that of a defender of my friends. You don't need to change anything. I would give my life to see them through. I finally only get into trouble when I'm around you, though. I never want to have that kind of power over somebody. She lands upon the deck, but just on her toes, like a dancer, like a ballet dancer as if the weight of sin has yet to fall on her shoulders. And the light of nature will be brought to them. We haven't done this before. Does that make us professional? That would make you amateurs at best. At best, I like that. I've had a hard time finding answers in my life. I'm glad I'm here too. Where are you from, Ezekiel? Wherever your wife goes when she dreams, and I'll walk away. Fuck you, and fuck your will. There's no redemption for the likes of you. You were never loved as a child. (sighs) How do you want this? Do you guys want to go ahead and start? Alright, so... Previously, as the bronze scales make their way on their pilgrimage, they find themselves in the elder woods of the Aino Forest. Leaving the city of Port Catru behind, they wandered along the Salamis Isles and coast between Sea Marsh and Willow Woods. Coughs gave hidden wild elves away who were quickly dispatched, de-armed, de-clothed, and sent on their way. But on after claiming that all of the INL belonged to who they referred to themselves as the Verdana, these scouts seemed to have an especially vicious a- anger and hatred towards the Lumeri elves of Asmzaros. Moving ahead, you came to an oyster bed, choosing instead to find an easier way around, diverting slightly to swim across the salty creek. Further, as twilight began to rise with the setting sun, you came to a bridge across another marsh creek. As Ellery moved forward to look for enemies, Ezekiel and Ball noticed bubbles on the water and movement among the coastline grasses. A Verdana with an open chest wound and a pulsing heart of flames leaped from the waters, grabbing Ellery and dragging her under. Caught off guard, the Verdana ambushed, though Ezekiel and Ball acted unsurprised. The wild elves were difficult to pin down, hiding amongst the tall grass marsh grasses or beneath the salty waters. Calvin leapt into the waters after Ellery before engaging with the one flaming and emotionless Verdana as Ezekiel and dolphin forms struck out from the waters. Taking an arrow, Vesper fell, felt a wave of vengeance rushing across the battlefield towards the perpetrating Verdana. In a handful of heartbeats, the Verdana were taken down with flames, weapon, and laughter. Calvin drew a spear through their leader who exploded in flames, causing the last to flee. We come to, back to the story here, with silver, gold, holy flames of Baal that have just died down, leaving the angry red embers of his heritage as he tried and failed to save the last Verdana. Vesper has just rushed over to keep the last elf from passing while Ellery and Ezekiel worked to put the growing flames of the marsh out. You've just begun to gather upon this marsh coast as the last of the twilight falls, leaving you in the dim light of a few remaining embers of burnt ground. Bodies of the Verdana lay out, their blood seeping into the ground and sand, some burnt heavily. The bridge creaks in the cool winds as you look beyond to see the wild path trail off into the night. What would you like to do? The one with the thing in its chest, did that body burn up? Is there still a husk? Um, after you and Aze- you and Ellery kind of take out most of the active flames, moving over, you see the body in kneeling position, curled up and leaned over, completely burnt, unrecognizable, but there's still a husk remains. And where that wound of the heart is, there's still that dim, glowing light. Uh, I would like to go examine that body. Okay. I think see. I mentioned at the end of last episode, I wanted to do that as well. Okay. Um, so y'all two move towards that, beginning to inspect it. The rest of you, are you guys doing anything? I was just going to kind of hover around where Ball is and not do anything else for now, because I kind of need him to be here if I'm going to talk to him. Okay. 
Uh, so you hang around Ball, who's just staring over this breathing, stabilized Verdana, who's burnt from his hands. He's still engulfed in not as big of an inferno, but an inferno all the same of red embers. One of either Ezekiel or Vesper, y'all can either aid each other, or one of you can roll either investigation, a medicine check, depends on what you're going for. I know I'm I'm gonna actually look at the heart thing. So probably remove it. Okay. And Ezekiel? I'm trying to get a sense of I know it's unnatural, I'm trying to get a sense of how. Like what happened to this thing. Okay. So I'll say Vesper, you can make a medicine check to perform an operation. Uh so use dexterity instead of wisdom. And then for Ezekiel, you can roll either a nature check or a medicine check to kind of inspect the body and see how it's unnatural. That's really bad. That's an 11. Uh, I'm trained in nature, but ironically better in medicine, so we'll do that. 24, natural 20. Okay. So, Ezekiel, you move in to look at this creature. You can tell from what they looked like before they burnt up. All you can really tell now is it's humanoid. Um, burnt to a crisp, but it was something like a golden elf like the others, but it didn't react to pain, didn't react to fear. And looking at that dim glow as you get closer, you can see there's a heavy scar, and it's almost hollow where that place is. And beneath it, you can see something glowing, burning. You can see where leather stitching, just the bits of crisp, where the leather stitches of some sort have been burnt away. There was some sort of procedure performed upon this creature. You can see swirling tattoos like the other Verdana, but some of these are different than the others. Uh, almost brands placed atop. Uh, these strange symbols that are familiar but don't spell a word. Within that hole, you see where their heart would be a bloom. A bloom of some sort of burning flower. You see the petals glow like the embers of a fire that refuses to die out. As Vesper moves in, tries to remove it, puts her hand too close, and takes nine fire damage, which would be reduced to four for Vesper. Um, as she kind of puts her hand and tries to cut it out and immediately kind of <laughs> pulls her hand away, kind of waving it with the burning flames. Well, that's not something I've seen before. Nor I. Hmm. Your friend, Melly, she's smart, right? Yeah. She and Arizona have probably got some distance. Yeah, I'm glad she stayed back to protect her. Maybe we should call her over. I have no idea, but someone who's read a book in her life might. Yeah, um, yeah let's go get her. Okay. So you all kind of wave Melly over. The rest of you all, you're all fairly in proximity to each other. The rest of you are doing anything in particular? Keeping watch, just keeping an eye, anything like that. Yeah, for the most part, that's probably uh, watching the the surface of the water, trying to keep things. Get, I guess, make sure everybody's across the bridge and get everybody together and start get so that we can move as soon as we can. It's already dark, I'm, like you said, right? Yeah, at this point, darkness is is fully fell. So um, uh, maybe keeping in that in mind and looking for maybe a not-too-far place to camp up for the night. Were okay. we planning on doing anything with the one that was knocked out? Dinner? We all had a plan. Calvin, weren't <laughs> you guess he's not here. healing some of them before? I thought someone was taking... Or maybe you were just moving the bodies. I don't know. I thought someone was taking care of some of the people we massacred. But I could be forgetting or misremembering. I think Calvin was healing up. Yeah, I was. I understood that. Got it. (laughs) Uh, Speaking of which, could we consider this a short rest? Um, Those of you that, if you want to start taking a rest, for those of you that are actively doing something, you'll have to wait. But if you'll settle down after this, you certainly can. So I'll say anyone who's just keeping an eye out, roll a perception. If you're looking for camp, uh, roll a survival check. Um, as Millie, um, you're waved over, you see Ezekiel and um, Vesper looking over this burnt to a crisp husk, kind of kneeled down um, around sundered ground. Uh, you guys waved me over? 
Uh, I was hoping, do you have any idea what this flower might be? It's not something I'm familiar with, but your experience is quite different. It burns, don't touch it. Uh, okay. Um, do I know what this is? You could make yeah. a coming at it from an arcane specialty. You can roll an arcana check. Yeah. 25. Okay. So going off of what Ezekiel kind of shows and tells you, um, he points to this heart that's been embedded. Some sort of, Ezekiel tells you, has been some sort of procedure. The heart has been replaced by some sort of magical flower. Looking upon the rest of it, you see the runes that Ezekiel points out, and you can tell the way, the pattern of where they're placed, um, and some faint lines connecting them. This is more than just a simple physical surgery, but a arcane ritual of some sort. You're aware of the rituals you're able to cast, but there are older magics that have um, been experimented upon for years, and this is something that you have never read specifics about, but there are rituals um, that can bind magical elements, artifacts, pieces, or powers to living entities. It looks like someone has used some sort of ritual in order to connect the power of this heart to the entity themselves. So the the power of the flames that came from their sword, the power from the flames that spurt off their body came from this flower itself, not from any inherent magical ability of the person, whoever they were before. Okay, I'll explain that to and them. Actually, with a 25, you've read of powerful flowers specifically, powerful blooms from other places, of other, other worlds beyond the material. The exact natures of it, there's not much research on it, but you know and have heard of these powerful blooms themselves from other places, including the Feywild, or the Land of Fairy. Okay. I'll pass that on to the gang. Okay. And as you tell them, Calvin and Amson, since you're kind of looking for a place to camp, you'll scout out just a little bit of a ways. Um, looking, you see the trail continues on along the coast. Sometimes it looks like there's other islands that it kind of jumps back and forth to. Considering where these elves came from, their ability to either breathe on their water or hold their breath for a long time, there's areas that you can get away from the water. Um, that might be safer from them. There's areas basically further off the coastline where you can find security in deeper forest and be able to set up a decent perimeter. Ellery looking out, you hear a few calls of an owl and other birds. You hear buzzing insects, and uh, you notice kind of fireflies kind of sh- sh- uh, blinking in and out as Millie's kind of doing her arcane autopsy. All right, well, seems rather tricky to get out. Do we care enough to try again, or we should probably get to the others and go find a place to camp soon? Yeah, I I can try again, probably. Um, Here, let me get you some light, and I'll help you out. And you would notice Vesper, I imagine she's possibly ambidextrous, but she's using her left hand because her right is still holding the rapier. But I'll try again to okay. remove this heart. Uh, roll at advantage. Medicine using dexterity. Any proficiency modifier. This is a procedure. Uh, that's a 19. Okay. So this time you're a bit more careful in cutting away. Tendons is the closest word you can come to describing what it is. But it's it's not humanoid tendons. It's something from the flower. More akin to roots or vines or something in between but you cut them loose, and they're harder than you expect. Your scalpel becomes hot red from just the impact of touching this hot bloom, but eventually it falls out of the hole into the ground, steaming away sort of the moist ground. You're able from then to you know use some sort of it, have something to pick it up. And I... Um. And I presume during this, with the light now, I can see the things attached to her wrist, Melly and I, because we're close enough? Yeah, and I'll say about this time, Calvin and Amson, after these couple of tries, are beginning, are coming back um, and are reapproaching y'all. As Melly and Ezekiel both notice, with the scalpel in the left hand, you notice she's still holding the rapier in her right, 
and you see two of the hand guards that were made of snakes. There were several of them, and two of them have bitten into her hand or are currently embedded in her hand. Uh, okay. Well, I'll grab some leather or something and wrap the flower in. Why don't we get some place a little less scary where we can talk? And I'll just kind of like give Melly a look and <laughs> wave the others. I'm gonna look at him a little bit confused, feel me like, okay. And then follow. And just to be clear, are you f- like pulling them aside or are you following Calvin and Amson to what they found? Oh, I, yeah, I was just gonna follow them. I figured this is a group conversation. Okay. So Calvin and Amson, do you all lead them back to the camp? Or is there anything else you all are doing besides um, finding this camp? Yes. Are are we doing something with this unconscious dude over here? I mean, I know we didn't want him to run off and report back and probably end up with more of these people coming after us, but are we just leaving him? Why don't we tie him up and when Ball figures out what he wants to do with him, he can tell us. Yeah, Bull nods, we'll say. At this point, the flames have burnt down, and so he picks up the unconscious elf and then takes him with y'all, following Calvin and Amson across the bridge, down the trail a little bit before turning off, finding apparently some higher ground that's a little bit further away from any creeks or the coast itself. You can still smell the marsh. It's not too far away, but you go inland enough to where you find some good high ground with a lot of tree coverage. Um, and you kind of find a stump where you can at least sit down or set some of your things and begin to set up camp. So, Vespa, uh, couldn't help but notice you, uh, are having a little bit of an issue with your, your sword there. Yeah, I guess so. Does that possibly have anything to do with your erratic running around you happened to do in that last fight? I don't know. Probably. It all kind of was a blur, admittedly. And I guess now I'll kind of reluctantly hold up my hand so the group can see the snakes fighting me. What the fuck? I don't know. Did uh, they come up? I was gonna try to pry them out, but... Maybe you want some help with that? No, um, it's fine. I can. I'll handle it. And besides, this the, snake spider. It your did help us. Well, help. it did help us kill these people. I mean, they attacked us first. Like, uh, it was what are you? What are you saying? The sword was helpful because you wielded. Any it, sword I mean, would have. Listen, it it helped helpful. you. Normally, I stand back, and it helped you almost get killed when you ran through a whole group of people. Bess, well, when I'm was fine. the last time you put that sword down? Just not even in your sheath or on your person? Put it... What do you mean? When you sleep at night. I, I noticed it that night we were attacked in the boat. You had it on you before anything. Have you been... Have you let go of it at all? Not... No. I think we should try and remove the snakes. It, they're fine. It's not even painful. It's fine. You guys are overreacting. That's fair. It's fine. I'll deal with it. Listen, there's that bloom to deal with. It's much more important. This will only take like five seconds. It's much more important. Listen, I'm fine. I'll deal with it. Oh, we could deal with it as a group. Drop it. It's fine. I'm fine. fine. I'll take care of it. Just let's deal with everything else right now. Uh, Calvin will step forward and and be kind of in front of uh, Vesper and then turn to everybody else and say, Guys, she's got a point. She said she'll take care of it. We get she earned our trust a long time ago. Why are, why are we getting on her back about this? Let's Thank you, Calvin. Kinda back down a little bit. Take care of what's necessary at the moment. Fine, if we want to deal with this first and I'll kinda take out the pouch with the presumably bloody fire bloom. Yeah, the blood has been boiled away and the leather you used is burnt. Nearly to a crisp. It's beginning to fall apart. I'll put it on the ground. The center of everything. <laughs> Ooh, but I'll start gathering sticks and starting a campfire with it. 
Yeah, easy enough. <laughs> um, you're able to set up a campfire, putting it in the middle easily a minute or two with the sticks on the flames before they ignite. Would identify work on this thing? You can certainly try. I would like to try. Okay. Do you have to touch it? Uh, it is range touch. Okay. So you're going to have to touch uh. it. How are you casting it? You get the feeling that if you try to do the ritual, the long version, it's going to be a lot of holding your hand to it and burning the whole time. Okay. I'll just, I'll use this false slot and just do it for a minute instead. A minute? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I'll see how bad it is. If it hurts, like, a lot, then I'll stop before the minute and not do it. <laughs> so six seconds go by of you touching it, um, and you take seven points of fire damage. You know you're going to have to do that about nine more times. I was going to do some math real quick. Yeah, no, I'll stop. Okay, so you pull away just taking the seven points of fire damage, realizing you can't, you can't do it for that long. Yeah, I can't cast Identify on this, guys. It's going to burn me. Well, thank you for trying. You guys can see this flower, and it appears to be similar to the bloom of an orchid, with these red, orange, and yellow kind of burning embers. Though even though it burns like an ember, from the few of you that have touched it or seen people touch it, it bends easily like a flower would, by the gentle petals of a flower would bend and move. All right, well, what do we know so far? There's the ancient elves that believe that they're somehow owed this land. And whatever this thing that had this flower was, obviously underwent a powerful ritual to get it. I think I happen to know a story <laughs> about these people and possibly this creature and maybe this thing. DM, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this basically exactly what I heard from the from the tattoo artist two ep <laughs> two sessions ago? Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, so I'm gonna tell everybody the story around this campfire that was made using this fire bloom heart, and tell them about how I went to a tattoo artist before we left and. He just so happened to tell me the story about a being called the Ember Witch, who was a queen of these wild elves, and how she was super powerful, how she could deafen anybody with her voice, and seeing her would blind people from because of her beauty and all this kind of stuff, and how she's powerful. And how he happened to mention that there are these... I don't remember the term that he used exactly, however, fire... Uh, bloom hearts, I think, something like that. Um, how they are no longer the people they once were, but are instead painless soldiers, almost? Servants of the Ember Witch. And as Amson tells you the story and kind of t tells you about the um, tattoo, you notice it, some, some of you all have seen it, but you notice it more. Now that it's nighttime, it seems to glow with like the silver blue light. Um, in the appearance of what looks like a bird. And as you look at it, it's slowly shifting as it talks, almost as if it's, its wings are moving. Oh, yeah, I got this while I was there, too. Some tattoo artists. That's fucking badass. So I guess the biggest question is, is this our problem? I think they're trying to make us their problem. Or other something. Problems are being made for us. And it's whether we want to avoid it or continue down the problem path. Eloquent as ever, Calvin. Thanks, sir. Personally, oh, please oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was just going to ask if anyone had any thoughts, so clearly do. I don't like the idea of some creature from another plane corrupting the hearts of men, particularly when they seem to want to take over a land I know belongs to no one. So we're supposed to rush into more of these and kill this Amber Witch that apparently makes you go blind and deaf and crazy? I'm not necessarily insinuating that, but perhaps looking into it along our travels wouldn't be something I would oppose, but again, I understand the dangers. 
not sure how much investigating we can do from here, but maybe the next time we hit some kind of town or settlement, we can ask if anybody knows anything. Yeah, we could ask them about um, what they know about the wild elves in the region. We just passed through them, ran through a few of them, and they seem to be spewing off some sort of confusing stories. I thought that maybe perhaps we could, you know, talk to you about them, blah, 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 blah. Or we could talk to the person that we brought along with us. Well, Ezekiel's the only one who can talk to it. No, this self. Oh. Ezekiel's the only one who can talk to him, though. And Ball. What? Never mind. Ball, you were the one that gathered him up. Did you have intentions with this man? He just wanted to know why he didn't answer me. I don't think he could understand, and... <sighs> Well, we could try and wake him up and see what he knows. The other two we talked to before weren't exactly forthcoming. Almost zealous in some way. Now that I'm thinking about it, this is the second war we are aware of on this continent. The elves are also fighting White God, aren't they? Maybe not the same elves, but I don't know. Did any of you hear anything about what the uh, war with White Guard is about? Even which elves were there fighting probably would have been good to ask, but I didn't think to. They seemed to think I was a part of it, so... <laughs> There's also people like me out there. Hmm. I wonder if all of them have the same sort of celestial destiny thing going on. But it doesn't sound like it if they're working as mercenaries, which is what we heard, wasn't it? I don't know. We're sort of in the dark about a lot of things. I haven't... I don't know that I've come across any others quite like me before, so... Regardless, I have a feeling this won't be the last attack we experience while making our trek north. I guess we should just be prepared. Well, it might be worth it to see if this elf has is a little bit more talkative than the others were. Okay. Well, why don't we wake him up? Have we tied him? Yeah. Uh, I will healing word, I guess, at this level. Uh, don't use the spell. I have lay on hands. I'll give him a point and just kind of tap him awake. See so you tap him awake, a slight glow and breeze drifting by, um, as he kind of blinks open, barely conscious, with the one hit point, heavily wounded. Kind of realizes that he's surrounded by people, tries to move, then realizes he's bound, and then just kind of, after struggling for a few short moments, like realize he's not getting out of this, and then just kind of settles back down, looking up at you all. Well, then, in Sylvan, hello, friend. Perhaps you might be so kind as to tell us why exactly you attacked us. You are not us. Astute observation. You asked. So you would have left elves alone. No, they deserve it worse than you. You were led by something. With that pointing to the heart. Where'd he get that? A gift. From the Ember Witch? Our queen. A blessing. He should not have it. But I do. Hmm. For how long? Perhaps you can help me figure that out. Will she be coming for it? I. Uh, he just smiles at that. Widely. Knowingly. Perhaps we can deliver it back to her. Where would we find your queen? I can show you the way. If you release my bounds. I bet you could. I will translate everything as I'm going. I'm bored. What do you all think? Do we really want to make this our problem? Give him the flame, flame and flower and send him on back to his witch or... Queen or what the fuck ever. We can be on our way. 
Maybe this will be more cooperative if we tell him we're just trying to pass through. We don't want to stay in their lands. The last two we told that we kept both alive and then they sent more. If that's what you want, that's what you want. But I can't help but think of all the travelers who will be passing behind us. If that's not our problem, it's not our problem. I just simply wanted to point it out. I have a couple of thoughts. One, if we do let him go, with or without the flower tonight, we should move camp. But as far as looking into this, I wouldn't really have any objections, except I'm a little worried about dragging Orizana into a fight. Yeah. And if just that group... I mean, they did a number on us, let's be honest. Could go right to the heart of them. Pun not intended. Could be worse. Could be worse for those travelers that pass through. The ones that can't defend themselves. No, I definitely think we should deal with this, just... Though, it doesn't seem like this is exactly a new problem. If people in town already know about it, maybe most people who pass along this route are more prepared. Perhaps. Uh, how much further to Harrel? I'm not zoomed in enough. I know we've only um, been gone like a day, but... Like two more days. Should we just continue along and see what we learn in the next town? The, according to the map, they're fairly close to the coast. If anybody's dealing it with it, it's probably them. Yeah. If you'd like, I can take us inland a bit. We can walk through the off the path, but continue in that direction. That might be a good idea. They seem to like attacking from the water, or from close to it. You see, the bound Verdana doesn't understand this language you're speaking, but is looking up at Ball, at first in fear and then more in curiosity. He finally speaks up to where Ezekiel and anyone who understands Sylvan um, would hear. And how many hearts does this one have? The same as you. Hmm. You understand, then. Did Ball just answer in Sylvan this time? Oh, did he? I don't think... I don't... <laughs> I don't think Ball knows how to speak Sylvan as much as he does apparently understand it. Okay. Well, in that case, he doesn't say that. Ball, I want you to listen closely as I'm speaking. Try and repeat after me, but just what you're hearing. And I'll just try and go through in Sylvan, say, simple phrases, trying to get him to, I don't know, jump that gap somehow. Okay. Ball, make an intelligence check if you're trying to kind of follow Ezekiel's lead. Uh, that'll be a five, a strong, healthy five. Okay. Ball seems to repeat back to you the translation. I mean, perfect translation, but not, doesn't really speak it back in Sylvan at all. But under seems to understand perfectly. Uh, that's odd. Why are you so concerned about this one? Turning back to that guy and how many hearts he has. Mm, a gift for my queen. Does she have other gifts like him? None yet. This will be special. Hmm. You're a very creepy person. I hope you know that. That is because you do not understand. All right. Do we give him the flower or not? Do we release him or not? Hey, did Ezekiel translate all of that last bit? Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah. go ahead. I don't like the idea of sending somebody back with knowledge about ball with some kind of intention of. I don't... Yeah, that's definitely creepy. I mean, I don't want any of us to be ambushed and whatever, but I certainly don't want anyone targeting Ball. I am a big um, target. What do you think, Ball? Should we send him back or should we, and I'd make like the cutting motion, send him back? I think he just does not know better. I don't think that we should do that. What do you want to do with him? I don't want to see more travelers get 
ambushed, but I am only one of many. What do the rest of you want to do? If he's a threat to the pack, we should eliminate him. Calvin, what do you think? I don't know. Uh, we don't necessarily need to kill him if we just let him go tomorrow and we're on our way. We're gone. If you guys are worried about time. what? Well, we did that yeah. last time. Yeah, but they had a choice. We'd be taking away their choice if we did this. Nelly? I kind of agree with Ezekiel on this one. All right, and uh, Amson, Nellery? I don't really want to kill him. It doesn't seem like any option is going to be a good one. Is there some way that we can, I don't know, set it up so that he'd be able to free himself eventually after we leave? So we don't just let him go immediately at the same time that we leave. We can get more of a head start, but then he won't be, you know, dead or left here to starve either. Actually, I, mean, I can. I have a spell that should be able to handle that that will wear off after a certain amount of time. All right. So maybe we should do that in the morning. Uh, my bigger fear is this heart thing. He seemed to suggest that his mistress would be coming back for it. If I was up on that, us. consider me terrified. Uh, I've I've got a question. Uh, what happens if we put it into the water? That's a good question. Do you? Can I? Yeah, I'll use the, my rapier. Well, can I use my rapier and just kind of scoot it into the water? Uh, you've you've moved away from water. You can go back yeah. to the water. Um, or pour out, you know, water skin. It's up to you whether you want to use your rations or not. I'll pour out my water skin on it. Okay, so pouring it out, shh, immediately it steams up. Um, the steam kind of rises up hot um, as you pour it on there. As you pull it away, you can see the balloon is not burning as bright as it was before, um, but it still burns. The edges of the petals seem dimmer than they once were, but it slowly, the heat begins to build up once more. Can we freeze it? Looking at her and Melly. I, I can't, but I look at Melly. Oh, yeah, I can. I'll, uh, I'll blast it. <laughs> so, um, the ashes of so and some of the flaming sticks go flying everywhere as a shard of ice impales the thing. And you see it from the inside as this frozen icicle is has the petal and frozen within. Um, you can see it dimly, the core of the flower is glowing red still, just barely beating it. Slowly it pulses by slowly melting away. Um, as it does slowly melt, the bloom is still burning, though not nearly as bright as it was before, and the heat is very slowly returning. What if I uh, nailed it like a few times? So, if yes, I just you kept hanging so? Each time the ice begins to melt away, that pulse of red appears again. You hit it again. The pulse begins again. You hit it again. Eventually, you see where the bloom, the ember, the burning effects of it doesn't seem to return again. And the ice melts at a normal rate, not at anything normal. You just see frozen, uh, this dim petal embedded in the ice. Yeah, it's in Silva. Well, shall we gag him and try and get some sleep? Sounds like a good idea. See so you gag him, set up to go to sleep. Do y'all take watches, I assume? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. oh, definitely. Uh, what's the order of the watches? I'll take first. I'll take second. I'll take third. I'll be a part of last. I'll watch with Vesper. Uh, I'll go first with Ezekiel. So, should someone do with Ellery? I'll be with Ellery. Okay, so I have Ezekiel and Ball first, followed by Ellery, Melly, Vesper, and Amson, and then Calvin following up there as the sun rises appropriate. Okay. Um, so I can go ahead and make a perception check, but I have something I'm doing about an hour into the watch. So 
Um, how I'm doing it, just to speed it so we're not just rolling perception check if nothing's happening, what I'll do is if something happens, I'll determine which watch it happens on, and then I'll jump to that to that watch. So you don't have to roll perception checks unless I tell you to. Okay. Uh, but but you can if you wanted to do something during your watch, like knit a sweater or whatever. So yeah. You can do that. Um, about an hour into the watch, well, you can make sure I do nothing inappropriate, but I'm going to go over, creep over to Vesper and try and get the sword away from her. And how are you attempting to do so? It's still, like, attached to her wrist? Uh, it's still embedded in her arm. Jesus. Uh. Or into her hand. Yeah. I don't actually know that there's anything I can do. Uh, I'm going to very gently try and pull one of the snakes off just to see what reaction it has on her. She's probably going to punch me, but. Okay. Um, roll the slide of hand check to try oh, to do it Jesus. without her waking up. Uh, I'm super dexterous, guys. Oh, but 18. And Vesper, what's your passive perception minus five since you're currently asleep? Minus five would be an eight. Doesn't sound right. Uh, What's your... 13 is my passive. Really? Okay, I thought it was yep. right. Okay. Yeah, nope. in that case. Yeah, I thought this yours was like 18. Never mind. No, that's, okay. that's other campaign. That's every single one of her other characters. That's <laughs> yes, 52%. That's my others. So Ezekiel, you're able to kind of get to it without her waking up immediately. Now give me a strength check to try to pull it off. Okay. So you pull it. And it feels like bending back metal. And as you do, you see the two fangs in this metal cross guard of this rapier pull out. But as soon as it comes out of the skin, it it moves and shifts back into position with the other, uh, with joining the other four serpents of this hand guard, making five that are in place and one is remaining. Um, I'll say, Vesper, you take one point of damage and wake up. Ow. Seeing Ezekiel just kind of hovering over you. What are you doing? Oh, ha! This is probably an invasion of privacy. Mm Mm-hmm. But I noticed you still hadn't taken care of the problem as you said you would. Yeah, I'm taking watch later. It's fine. Deal with it then. I'm tired. All right, Vesper. I'll respect your wishes. Good night. Good night. I'll just go back over to ball. Try to go back to sleep. Okay. Um, so as Ezekiel and Ball continue to watch, as always, stop me if you want to do anything else. A few um, cooing of owls, insects buzzing, you see fireflies, nothing of note seems to come. The Verdana is still awake and is just kind of watching, looking around. As Ellery and Melly take over, um, your watch goes by without any issue. Um, you're able to do something. Yes. <laughs> Is Vesper asleep? She's falling back asleep, <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. I'm going to try and sneak over and I want to try and cast Identify on the sword thing that's in her. Okay. Um, give me a sleight of hand check. Not a huge DC since you're not pulling anything off. You just have to touch it. Um, but you do need to be somewhat careful. Oh, no. It's no, no, five. So can I... Do it while she's awake. Um, she's gonna kill me. Vesper, what was your passive perception minus five? Is it minus eight? five is an eight, yeah. Okay, so Vesper, you notice some tugging on your hand and you look up and you see Melly this time. <laughs> standing over you. Hello. Are you serious right now? I just figured I wasn't doing anything. I thought maybe I'd just look at the sword because I thought it was it's cool. Fine, Melly. I'm not I'm not taking it off you, I just wanted to identify it, see what it does. Can I identify it? You already identified it for me, remember? It says Did I? Plus, yeah, it does a bit more damage. It's fine. And that's all it does? I mean, it's really helpful in the fight back there. It, you know, mm-hmm. it poisoned one of the foes, but... And can yet- I, I already took a watch. I'm on next watch. Can I sleep? So I'm actually able to be awake and perceptive enough to take care of all of you. Can you take the sword off first? And then I'll let you sleep? Why does it matter? Because you won't let it go. There are more important things. You have to watch a prisoner. Why are you dealing with me right now? Because Ellery's watching the prisoner. 
Uh, for the record, I am I am looking out at the surroundings, but I'm avoiding looking directly at the prisoner as much I as point. possible. Ellery is doing that watch, and I'm worried about your sword. I'm going back to bed. If I don't get enough rest tonight, I'm not going to be able to take care of us tomorrow. I won't have my spells or anything. Can I please just go back to sleep, Millie? Fine, but I'm not letting this go. Whatever. Okay, I'll go rejoin Ellery. I will go back to sleep for the second time. For the second time. Yeah, you're on the verge of losing that long rest privilege. But you are able to get back to sleep. Um, the rest of Ellery and Melly's watch goes by. Nothing new. And then Vesper and Amson take over um, and begin watching. And both of y'all roll perception checks for me. Thirteen. Ten. Okay. So you'll watch the Verdana at this point. Elves don't sleep, but he seems to have shifted somewhat to a more comfortable position and seems to be trying to rest. But otherwise, it goes by quiet. Are y'all keeping a fire glowing or keeping it just dim or completely out? or Very dim. Okay. So just some, some embers, maybe just a few twigs in there just to keep a little bit of heat. The night goes on, an hour goes by, an hour and a half goes by. As you're pushing after midnight in this late hour, when both of you notice a glow bobbing. At first you think it's a firefly, but it's not the yellow glow, it's purple. A deep, bluish purple that pulses and disappears. Do you see that? Yeah. Should we check it out? Probably for the best. I'll I'll go to the keep watch on this person. Okay. So Vesper, as you get up to go look, um, give me a perception check or investigation. Okay. Ooh, that's so bad. That is a five. Okay. So you go towards it, not immediately seeing anything. Every now and then, you see a firefly as you move in the direction. And it was decently far off. You move a little ways out, going towards it, trying to search for it. As that occurs... I'm not going to go too far from the camp, but... Yeah, yeah, you're, you're relatively close. So as this happens, Ball, you are sleeping soundly. When you hear what sounds like singing, whispering in your ears, you open your eyes... And you are standing on a beach as the waves roll in. There's a few barrels. On top of the barrels, there's um, a few bottles of wine. You can smell food cooking as you look over and see a campfire nearby cooking what smells like delicious seafood. You look over and you see a tent set up on the beach. Just the roof. There's a few chairs, a few more barrels. Some towels set up as you see people lounging upon the beach and under the tent. From the tent, you see someone moving towards you. A woman. Tan skin, brown hair, cut short. You see she has gold jewelry and clothes intertwined, dangling from her hair around her neck, guiding down in a sultry bathing suit as she approaches you. You see the most beautiful woman you've ever seen. And she smiles and comes to you. She carries a simple bamboo cup with dark wine in it. And she hands it to you. Do I feel like doing anything with this bamboo cup? Like, is there like a certain mood that Ball is feeling in this area? You feel at ease. And you feel in presence of Someone near Regal. Does she also have a a cup? She does. She kind of drinks from it, bringing it to your lips. Yeah, I think I'll kind of, you know, like uh, the glasses don't clank, but I'll cheers kind of in her direction, kind of like yeah. slowly. Yeah, and everything moves in this slow motion of a dream. Everything shifts slowly. The colors seem brighter than they ever would be. The sand warmer, the sun more comfortable, um, the breeze cool through your hair. It's almost like stepping into a Van Gogh painting. The colors swirl around you. 
Um, but her, she is, it remains in focus. She takes another sip and smiles. I do like flowers so much. Would you bring me one? I lost mine and I'd love to see it again. What kind of flowers do you like? Ah, uh, all kinds. Did you lose? An orchid. Mm. How did you lose it? I think you know. Would you bring it to me? When she says, I think you know, um, does that register at all to Ball? In a strange, distant way. There's connections and memories and thoughts that are kind of swirling in the back of your mind, but she's taking so much of the focus. It's hard to consciously think of those things. You recognize them, but they drift by as quickly as they came. And I guess in this dream state, I, do I feel kind of like a sensation where I don't have any reason not to trust her? Yeah, you you feel, even though you've just met her, as if she's an old friend. I'll keep my eyes up for a beautiful orchid. Good. Come to me with it. And as she says that, she kind of drifts away, gently placing a hand on your arm. She pulls away. Her touch feels tingly, a sensation, reminiscent of something between Nambra and the sunlight, warm. And as she kind of drifts back, the colors fade. And you see a starry night above you. You see the boughs of willow trees overhanging, the dim embers burning nearby um, as your eyes open once more. In camp. Uh, do I have uh, sleep breath or do I have wine breath? Um, breathing out and then breathing in, you smell wine upon your lips. And it's kind of the middle of the night? It's, I mean, maybe after midnight, 1 a.m., it's hard to tell. Um, I'm going to cast uh, Detect Poison and Disease on myself. Nothing. No disease, no harm. Then I'm just going to turn over and go back to sleep. Okay. Vesper, moving off um, towards the light, um, you search for a little while, seeing nothing. Coming back to camp. Whatever it was, it's not there now. Keep our eyes open. Tell Calvin when it's his turn. Yeah. We should do that. Yeah. How's your hand? That's fine. You still got something sticking in it. Doesn't hurt. It's fine. I mean, that's not healthy. <laughs> Probably not, but it doesn't bother me really. I think you should try to remove it. Why is everyone so worried about this? It's not important. I think you should try to remove it, and I'm going to use suggestion. <laughs> okay. uh, that's a, a unfortunately, throw. that's a wisdom saving throw. Ooh, oh, well, that's an 18, my dude. Damn it. Where's, where's the second little spell song? I'm imagining Amson, these aren't the joys you're looking for, and she's just like, no. <laughs> I am fine, Amson. Literally. I appreciate your concern, but I'm okay. Okay. Um, so as your watch carries on, ball. It feels like you just went back to sleep five minutes ago. This time you feel a warm touch on your shoulder. You turn over and you're in the camp, but it's quiet. You hear no sound. The colors swirl and mix together as if you're in a dream version of the camp itself. Your friends, Vesper and Amzen, talking, looking over the rest sleeping. The person who tapped your shoulder is the woman again. Would you please? And she looks down and points at the campfire where there's a bloom embedded in a shard of ice that's slowly melting. And it would please me so. Uh, and again, I feel like, I mean, I don't, necessarily feel like I don't have a choice, but I feel like I'm helping out a friend here kind of thing. Is that right? Yeah. And and mechanically, no compulsion, your choice, but you feel like she's offered no harm, um, has been entirely pleasant, um, and has offered pleasure in the form of wine um, and promises of more in her eyes. 
yeah, I mean, does this again? So this, just so I got this image right, does there is there anything that looks particularly unsafe about me reaching in to grab this thing? Um, you see, it's just enshrouded in ice. You saw earlier people got burnt when they touch it, but they could use leather or metal or rock or something to touch it without putting their hands to it. Right. But it's died down since then as well. I think, uh, yeah, I'll try to, I'll pull some like cloth out or something so it's not like, uh, ball grabbing it with his bare hands. And then just like before I go to pick it up to her, I'll say, uh, be careful. It's quite hot. And then I'll like reach to grab it. Okay. And as soon as you get up to go to reach to grab it, you find yourself standing, blinking awake. It's a strange sensation. It's as if the movements of the dream faded into the movements of your consciousness. Um, as Ball, you stand up in camp. Uh, do Vesper and I see this? Yeah, you see Ball stand up. Ball, what do you do? Is it uh, still like 1 a.m.? Or It's, yeah, pitch black at night. It's hard to tell what time it is. Um, how's my breath taste? Same as before. I'm not sure. I guess uh, it's pitch black, so I can't see. Can I see this uh, block of ice, so to speak? Yeah. There's still a few embers in the fire. Nothing bright or crazy, but a few glow. Oh, this is strange, because like, to me as a player, it's obviously kind of like, uh, it seems sketchy. And I'm trying to find this balance with how Ball would be feeling in the moment. Yeah, there's no mechanical compulsion to act either way. This is totally Ball's choice of what he feels he wants to do. I think uh, Ball will walk up to it um, and kind of like hesitates before he grabs it. And I guess, uh, yeah, no, maybe he just kind of like stops and looks at it for a little while. Okay. Amston and um, Vesper, you see Ball stand up, shift towards the fireplace, which are all sleeping around um, the campfire, um, and just stares down at the ice. You're right, Ball? Can't sleep. I just, just wanted to get this from the friend. What? What are you talking about? And then I'll look around, and I guess, do I see her? You don't see her. So I'll continue on saying her. But you know, I don't know where she went. Who? All right. You'll hear a voice. Those of you who are sleeping don't quite register the word, but hear something suddenly and kind of begin to wake up, looking around. Let's make this easy. You hear it emanating from the darkness outside of camp, towards the northwest. I'm going to come take it. You're going to let me take it, and then I'll be on my way. That doesn't sound like my friend. A light, purple and blue, appears in the general direction of the voice and begins to float in your direction. You see this pulsing light, much brighter than a firefly, um, as it gets closer. Um, this floating orb, maybe the size of a golf ball, but not physical, made of light itself, as it just kind of glows slowly, floating, hovering. Um, into the camp, floating and hovering above the ice, staying there. Uh, no. Does I groggily stand up? Okay. So you can groggily stand up as you see this light just floating, hovering, doing nothing above the ice. Um, the rest of you are now awake at this point and can kind of slowly get to your feet as you hear steps coming from where the voice came from. From the north? Northwest. I immediately cast spike growth in that direction. And on that location, can I cast fairy fire? Okay. And to be clear, are you trying to hit towards the sound of the steps? I'm trying to put the barrier between me and wherever the sound came from. It's okay. a 20-foot radius, so 40-foot sphere or circle of spikes. That appear in the ground. I'll, okay. I'll pop up the spell. Sure. I memorized so, it last night and did not use it. Ezekiel. Um, as roots and rocks are pushed to the surface of the ground, thorns uh, rip up out of the roots of the trees, and the ground is filled with spiky growth. The steps stop. As Amson, you're attempting to cast her fire. It's about 40 feet Roughly away from you in the darkness. 
do you have to be able to see or can you just the spot can, or can you I can do it on a location within 60 feet and it's a 20 foot cube okay and what save is that Dex. the dexterity okay so aiming it towards uh, the steps because it's such a big area you don't have to you know roughly where it is where are you all actually so that's like an eight so these purple still yep as always purple glittering fairy fire erupts in this area um, as you can now see as it settles down on the spiky ground and upon some of the trees you see a figure now uh, that you couldn't before see in the dark standing humanoid but tall nearly six foot six um about ezekiel's height but immensely broad-shouldered uh, that just stops <sighs> Fine. I need you to roll initiative. Wait, wait, okay. <laughs> Garbage. Fine, class, I'll roll initiative. Listen, you could have just given it and walked away. But I was going to say, why are we protecting this thing? We don't really need it. Really? And since we're about to get into some stuff and it, we're almost at break time, I'll say after you roll initiative, go ahead and take a, a break. We'll say come back at 9... 35? Okay. 9.35 after your roll initiative. Next time, on Back to the Story. Uh, there's still some residual magic there. Stronger than you thought, because the flower looks like it's iced over dead. Ball will look over to you for a second and then just kind of like put his finger up and continue looking back out into the distance. Ball make a wisdom saving throw. So, Calvin, you take 42 points of fire damage. I'm going to suggest that somebody stronger than myself attempt to pry this rapier from her. For part two of this episode of Back to the Story, you can find it on Stitcher, Google Play, Player FM, or TuneIn. If you'd like to support the show, feel free to buy us a coffee at ko-fi.com slash back to the story.